What a strange, strange start to this tournament. I'm John Renton with my review, New Japan Pro Wrestling's New Japan Cup Night 1, 2, and 3 events. Yeah, and the reason you're getting three shows, Human Centipede together, and the one is essentially after the New Japan Cup matches, nothing really noteworthy happened. And if you missed the anniversary show, you can hear me rant about the Great Okan beating Tetsuya Naito, but also slightly praise Jeff Cobb versus Kojima, which was a pretty good match, all things considered. But why they're giving a push to the Great Okan, I have no goddamn idea. But anyway, you know what? Some of these cup matches actually weren't that bad. But... Things will obviously have to get better once the second round and the quarterfinals, semifinals, and the finals happen. My bracket's toast on one side, by the way, after a couple decisions, which, one, I'm not going to complain about because I actually think they could do something good with it. Anyway, Suzuki, Zack Sabre Jr., and Doki, who's a perfect pandemic wrestler, mask, and pipe for social distancing. You get anywhere near Doki, he will slam you with his lengthy pipe. They took on Hanma Kid and Yuya. And when Suzuki laughs, you run. Zack Sabre Jr. is a joy to watch. Got style pile driver one, two, three. That's really it. There's not going to be a lot of coverage of these, um, of you know, like a lot of deep coverage of these multi-man matches because they were just kind of there. Evil, Yujiro, Ishimori, and Chase with Dick Togo. Dick inserting himself in the New Japan ring once again. Took on Tanahashi, Yoshihashi, David Finley, and Tiger Mask. Good to see Tiger Mask back in the ring. Um... Yoshihashi uh, getting choked by Yujiro's stick. Um, Dick wasn't even anywhere around, so Yujiro had to take his stick and try with choking. Man, New Japan loves the choking on sticks, don't they? Or maybe I'm just interpreting things that way because I'm just a crazy individual like that and trying to have some fun with some multi-man matches that are kind of all the same. Uh, Dick chokes Tiger Mask from behind, Scorpion the Tiger Mask for the win. United Empire, Will Ospreay, Cobb and the great Okan with B Priestley, who does not need to be there. Be there, if you will. She doesn't need to be... I know why she's there. She, Her and Will Ospreay are together. She doesn't do anything. She's not. She's annoying when she's just screaming at ringside. Sensational Sherry, she is not. Sensational Sherry in 2021, even. And Sensational Sherry's been dead since 2007. So, uh, they took on Kojima, Tenzon, and Watto. The only thing that was good about this was the finish. It wasn't that this match was bad, but Cobb catching Watto tore the islands 1-2-3. Very impressive finish. And Jeff Cobb is absolutely just a ma just a master of power. and everything. He's great to watch. Fale versus Yano, New Japan Cup first round. Basically, this ended up taking... I think Yano's introduction took longer than this match. Fale broke the trophy and tried to tape Yano, um, you know, up to where he couldn't get back in the ring. His ta he taped his wrists around the ring post, but he low blows Fale and then gets in the ring, but his hands are still around the post, so he gets in there and wins by countout. Keep Fale out of singles matches, please. Goto versus Taichi, New Japan Cup first round. Taichi chokes Goto, Choco, if you will. Um, sounds like a weird dish. Uh, once, you know, the heavy clotheslines got laid in, it, it picked up a little bit. A motivated Tai Chi is a dangerous Tai Chi, as Kevin Kelly has said. Uh, choke slam by Tai Chi, powerbomb for two. Goto does come back with a series of kicks. Man, Goto really can't kick your head off. The double headbutt, please stop doing that stuff. Gato clutch for two. GTW, GTR, one, two, three. It was a bit surprised that they were going to have Goto um, advance. I actually thought they might have Tai Chi advance. Nothing against it. I like Goto. I was just shocked they didn't have Tai Chi advance. So. We get Jay and Chase uh, and Ishimori versus uh, Finley, Hanari, and Yuya. By the way, that was it for night one. This is night two now. Um, just the usual cup hype. Um, bloody cross pins Yuya. It wasn't bad. It was just there. And, of course, Yuya was going to take the pin since he's the only one that, you know, wasn't involved in anything except to be the body to get beat up. The United Empire with B versus Bushi, Sonata, and Naito. Okan Okan's the shit. The gimmick is the shit. It's not that he's a bad athlete. It's the absolute goddamn sh I just don't get it. Um, why did he beat Naito? Why? Why did he beat Naito? Why? Please somebody explain to me. Why. I mean, yeah, Naito has a knee injury. Hell, Naito with one leg is better than Okan with two. Um, it was fine. Otherwise, Tour of the Islands pins Bushi. One, two, three. Once again, Cobb continues to impress. Hanma versus Suzuki. There were a lot of slaps and a lot of strikes, and I don't know why one would anger Suzuki. I have no idea. Hanma is going to probably, you know, not end... He's he's not going to be in great shape by the time he leaves the ring, because he's not in great shape now. Diving Kakeshi, Kakeshi off the ropes. They tried to make it where, like, Hanma was going to get the victory, but he obviously wasn't. Uh, Suzuki was laughing. Got a sleeper, near fall um, for two. Hanma actually did almost get, you know, a three count there. So at least they were trying to keep it a little like, oh no, Hanma can pull out the victory, but no, got style pile driver one, two, three. 
And Hanma was badly hurt, I think. I don't think he was selling. So I really hope this is going to be the last year and he can retire before he ends up paralyzed. Because I fear that he might with how he, he does not move well. Credit to him for trying to get back in the ring, but good lord. Uh, Kenta's boss battle theme, I just absolutely love that. It's like an RPG boss battle. I don't know why Juice did that to his hair. Who am I to criticize somebody's hair? So, Juice versus Kenta, New Japan Cup first round. Kenta, well, he rang Juice's bell by ringing the bell over his head. And he slams him into the barricade, just slams a uh, barricade into his head. This was pretty good, all things considered. Uh, Kenta targeted the head. Uh, we got the strikes laid in. We did get a nice table spot for Juice. DVD on the floor by Juice, though. And you could actually get a pretty goddamn loud noise. Drop kick in the corner. Drop kick in the spotlight, losing his religion. We get more uh, reversals and then we get a right hand. But, oh no, because, you know, the neck and head were focused on. And, you know, and Kenta was going to be determined to tap out Juice. He did tap him out with game over. This was good. I, I, it's not going to end up on my favorite matches of the year list. But all things considered, this was actually pretty good. And then we get to Shingo versus ok Okada, rather. Bravo. Bravo to these men. This was fucking terrific. Apparently Okada is dealing with two slip discs in his back. If that is true, go get some goddamn surgery, you crazy son of a bitch. Good fucking God. I know that he's a warrior, and he's going to continue to battle through it, but he should just get surgery. Will he be out for the two stadium shows in May? Probably, but guess what? I would rather have him be around for the G1 in full health than have to try to fight through this when it's just going to make it worse. Because he's still got about 10 years ahead of his career, or ahead of him in his career before things are really going to start to slow down with the style he works. Um, so he still turned it up here. Him and Shingo created magic here. Shingo um, sent him into the barricade and the apron back first. He targeted the back and then uh, we got, you know, clothesline. We got an elbow off the top and then Rainmaker by uh, Rainmaker posed by Shingo. He was really taunting Okada here. Uh, we get a tombstone. We get a lot of really good... I don't like the money clip. I just don't... He's trying to make it work, and it's not going to work at all. Huge superplex uh, to Okada. That looked painful. We got Made in Japan for two. And I was thinking... I was like, oh... I, I didn't know. I avoided the spoilers. I actually thought they were going to give it to Okada. Because like, they could give it to Shingo, and I'd like to see it. But I just don't. I just don't see it. And then once I read about his back, I'm like, oh, maybe Shingo will win. But I was like, nah, he's not going out in the first round. Okada hits a drop, click, drop kick, rather, gets the money clip on, and then Rainmaker for, um, from Shingo for two. We get a roll-up for two, um, and we get a pumping bomber, and last of the dragons, one, two, three. Shingo, shocking, pretty much breaking a lot of brackets. I had Okada going to the final. Again, that's before I found out about his bad back, but I was like, oh, they're going to have him beat Shingo, and they're going to have him go, like, to the final. Nope. If they have Shingo go to the finals, I'm not going to complain one goddamn bit. I'm not upset about this. And then we go to night three, which, if it wasn't for the fact that the two, like, cup matches weren't all that good, I probably would have, like, been... I wasn't that impressed with this show. I wasn't. This was kind of a lazy show. The cup matches weren't awful, but they were just... There. This show was just there. yu gi versus Yota, usual Young Lion action. Uh, I will say that I think both these guys could be great rivals for a number of years. Uh, Yuya did get, or Yoda got in some good strikes. Yuya kept focusing on the arm. And then a Mahistro cradle variation. One, two, three. Suddenly, shockingly, Yota gained the victory despite the bad arm. That was some good stuff. Yuya was upset. Yoda was like, I gotcha. And that was some, that, that was a little, little bit good storytelling. And the great Okab, as I've been calling them whenever they team up, because well, only Cobb is the great one, and Okan is the shits. Kojima and Hanma is who they took on, and Hanma needs to retire. Said that before. Um, and then, of course, Cobb tries the Kokashi, more like the Cub Kashi. Really struggled badly with that. Moving on toward the islands of Hanma, one, two, three. I mean, Cobb continues to impress here, even in these multi-man matches. Jay, Kenta, Evil... And Dick, Dick actually in the ring legally, a legal Dick inside a New Japan ring. I'm going to keep saying that because it's funny. With Gato, they took on Tanahashi, Juice, Hanari, and Taguchi. Um, I will say that at least when Taguchi dials back the comedy stuff, he can actually do pretty well. They do do uh, Taguchi gain uh, quadruple teamed and high fly flow pins Dick. I will tell you this though, man, Dick getting splashed in a New Japan ring, kind of uncomfortable and probably messy. They probably had to change it after Dick splattered all over. 
I might as well make everybody as uncomfortable as I am when I say that stuff. And then Hanare attacks Jay afterwards because he believes that he can beat Jay White. If Hanare beats Jay White, I will love it. And I love Hanare. I don't think we're going to go that route, but I would love to see. I will not complain one bit if Hanare beats Jay White. And then we have Okada, Sho, Ishii, and Goto taking on LIJ members Naito, Shingo, Sonata, and Bushi. More cup hype. Uh, give me Sho versus Shingo in a you know series of matches. They've had great matches before. They did a lot of great shit here, and even though Show did get in some shots, he got hit with the Pumping Bomber, laughs at Dragons 1, 2, 3, and I'd love to see these guys compete in a series of matches, possibly over the Never Openweight title. Maybe, well, I mean, it wouldn't be over the World title, but I would like to see it. They're like a best of seven thing, <clears throat> winner gets a title shot, because these guys can create magic. They've created magic before, and they will in the future. Then we get Gabriel Kidd versus Zack Sabre Jr. New Japan Cup first round. As expected, Z Zack Sabre Jr. is absolutely wonderful to watch. And Kidd did very well. I will say this as a young lion, even though he has uh, really improved and done a lot of great in-ring work, he is just great to watch. And Zack Sabre Jr. is so smooth. I cannot, you know, say enough about how smooth and how talented Zack Sabre Jr. is in the ring. He's great to watch. He never delivers a bad match. Even if it's in a multi-man match, he will just... Find a way to just do something where I don't know how... I can't think of the stuff he does, let alone even think about pulling it off. And he just makes it look so effortless. Imagine if him and Kota Ibushi had signed to, um, to uh, you know, WWE back in 2016 at the Cruiserweight Classic. Could you imagine how much different New Japan would look and how badly they would have been wasted there? Because their styles wouldn't have fit. But great shit here. Gabriel Kidd really did shine here. He... Even when he got his neck targeted, he got in some really, really good shot. He did hit some hard strikes, but eventually a triangle choke for the victory. Zack Sabre Jr. winning, and that was the right call. Gabriel Kidd got in a good performance. It was uh, nearly 20 minutes. It was a bit longer than the main event, but it was it was good stuff. Then we get Osprey versus Tenzon. New Japan Cup first round. Did they forget that Tenzon was supposed to retire the Mongolian chop? It was a stupid stipulation, but did they forget it? Well, they kept doing it here, and Osprey was healing it up, and they should go with Osprey to win the New Japan Cup. Whether I, however, I feel about him outside the ring for stuff a few years ago, and you know, guys know some of the stuff, some of the stuff he's promoted on Twitter, some of the you know money he's asked for, and all that. Regardless of how you know he's acted outside the ring, they want to go with him. They should go with him, and not have him beat Ibushi, but at least win the New Japan Cup would be something. Help Zack Saber Jr. stock in 2018. So, uh, Tenzon goes for the vice, uh, we get an Oscar for two, we get chops again, but nope, Stormbreaker, one, two, three. So that's it right there. That's how I'm going to cover these shows because there's not a lot outside of these cup matches. So let me know your guys' thoughts on the tournament in the comments. Now, who do you have winning the cup after pretty much everybody's bracket probably got destroyed when Okada lost? Anyway, agree, disagree with what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.